Mas cabeceira no garapé. So what Rosario is telling us is the high tidal floods. Now they come in a way that you don't expect anymore. In the vast Amazon River Delta of northeastern Brazil, where farmers like Rosario Costa Cabral live, the climate is changing. Miguel Pinedo Vasquez, a scientist from Columbia University's Earth Institute, leads a team of researchers who are traveling around the Delta to study how Rosario and other farmers are adapting and how they are helping to preserve the rainforest even as they harvest a living from it. Rosario is 64 and tends her forest garden with a machete and a chainsaw. Looping a burlap strap to her ankles, a machete tucked into her belt, she will climb 40 feet up skinny acai palms to lop off bundles of berries. Pineda Vasquez and his colleagues are interested in learning from those he calls expert farmers like Rosario, who have a special knack for experimentation and adaptation. The Amazon is the largest river in the world, draining an area nearly as large as the contiguous 48 United States. It pumps about a fifth of the world's river water into the Atlantic Ocean and pushes a plume of fresh water 250 miles out to sea. The Amazon Delta is hundreds of miles wide and home to 15 million people, mostly poor. As Pinedo Vasquez says, the Amazon is so big it behaves like a sea. Rosario lives in the municipality of Mazagon, a few hours by road and river from the city of Macapá, capital of the state of Amapá. More than a hundred inches of rain falls here each year. Rivers and streams lace through the forest. Humidity thickens the air even when it isn't raining, and the average temperature hovers in the high 80s. Tides are rising higher than they used to. Seasonal floods spread further and last longer now. Several different factors affect the climate in the Amazon Delta including rainfall and runoff from the 4,000-mile-long Amazon basin, and the periodic warming and cooling of the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean, commonly called El Nino and La Nina. Sea level and ocean temperatures also are rising as a result of global warming, affecting rainfall patterns and increasing the chances of severe storms and flooding from storm surges coming in off the Atlantic Ocean. Benedo Vasquez and his colleagues will recruit farmers throughout the Delta to help them take measurements to try to figure out how things are changing. The researchers want to develop an early warning system for climate to help farmers anticipate floods and dry spells so they can prepare and adapt. In the past, logging companies, cattle ranchers, and palm oil plantations cut broad swaths through the jungle. The deforestation of the Amazon elsewhere continues, but in this part of the Amazon Delta, farmers like Rosario are allowing the forest to regrow. They are preserving the rainforest and the Delta ecosystem by farming it. Preserving the forest is also good for the rest of us. Deforestation is a major source of the heat-trapping gases like carbon dioxide that are warming the planet but a preserved forest can absorb more of that CO2 from the atmosphere, and its biodiversity can offer us many useful medicines and other products. There are no roads to Rosario's farm. People get around by boat. Rosario lives with two brothers, Jean and Albino, in a house they built from wood harvested from their land. They also keep a house in town for other family members, and for times when the water rises too high on the river. The tides that flood the forest around Rosario's house provide a rich nursery for shrimp and dozens of species of fish. Her brothers set hourglass-shaped traps and bring in enough to sell 66 pounds of shrimp a week. It's a mainstay of both their income and their diet. If you lose the forest, they say, you lose the fish and shrimp. Rosario and her brothers cultivate hundreds of fruits, woods, and other forest products, guava, limes, bananas, and acai berry, and less familiar fruits such as tapareba, kupuasu, and alligator cacao. 
They grow hardwood paumalato and prakaruba trees and thatch palms. Oil from the prakashi tree used for skin and hair care products and to cure snake bite goes for about $34 a pound. She mentioned that even in the past they could plant cassava. Now they cannot anymore. The, the floods is happening more frequently. To replace the traditional field crops grown in the Delta for generations, Rosario experiments with new crops and techniques, learning by trial and error. She hedges her bets, growing a diverse set of products, storing some until market prices go up. And she cultivates many species of trees, including one that takes about 200 years to mature. So um, conservation or forest protection is nothing new for these people. So many resources that they obtain from the forest cannot be obtained from, from other areas. It, they are produced by the forest. If you conserve to use and you use to conserve. Thank you.